Hi guys, my name's Andy and in this lesson I'm taking you through the seven basic open chords and these should be the first chords that you learn if you're learning guitar for the first time or maybe if it's the first time in a long time. These chords are in the same order as I teach them in my free beginners course available at andyguitar.co.uk where we've got heaps of real song lessons taking you from absolute beginner going right through to having a repertoire that you would be proud to play in front of your friends. Now we're going to start off with the E major chord. This is the first chord that I would teach any of my beginner students if they were in a private lesson. And I'm going to show you where to put your fingers for each one of these chords. So we're going to have your first finger in the area of the first fret, which is this area here. On the third string, which is one, two, three, right there. And then we're going to have your middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string. And we're numbering the strings from bottom to top. So one, two, three, four, five, right here. And then your third finger needs to squash in directly underneath your middle one, like this, at the same fret, but that's on the fourth string. And then if we press down with your fingers, tips at a 90 degree angle, and we leave plenty of space here so that we're not touching the bottom of the guitar, that should ring out really great. Now these chords are called open chords because they include open strings. So we need to make sure that these open strings, specifically these thinnest two, are ringing out by not touching them with the underneath of your first finger or the palm of your hand here. It's really important that you get this first chord in really good form because it sets you up to be able to do all the rest of these chords which we're going to learn from this E because our second chord is the A chord and I'm going to change from it by doing this. This is our A major chord. Now what we did was when we were on the first chord we keep our first finger down and we're going to call that our anchor finger and we're going to slide that just over the metal strip that goes down over that metal fret but keeping on the same string so it never actually lifts off and we're going to move your middle finger just above at the same fret but on the the string directly above and then your third finger goes directly below that string which your first finger is on so essentially we've got one two three if we're learning this chord afresh now, because this is the second chord we've done, we actually want to strum it from the fifth string here, from the next string down. And that makes sure that we've got the lowest note as an A, because this is the A chord. Now, these first two chords are in line with level one of my beginner's course, and that level is all about mastering the change between the E and the A by keeping that first finger down and sliding over. The next chord we're going to learn is the D chord. So this chord again we can keep our first finger exactly where it is at the same fret but it would be great if we could move it this way just a little bit because when we're at this side of the fret everything rings out a little sweeter than it does at this side of the fret. Everything sounds better when we're just here. And this is our D chord. A very bright happy sounding chord and we have your first finger again where I said before we've got your middle finger on the second fret of the first string and then we make a little triangle shape by having our third finger at the third fret of the second string here so one two and three and then we strum from the third string from the thickest one because that is the open D string, so E, A, D, and they're our first three chords. Nice and logical. To check that these chords are ringing out great, you'll want to do a strum with them, and then pick each individual string, and then do a final strum. So strum, pick, and strum. That way we're checking that there are no strings that sound a little bit like this okay so if we've got any strings here that aren't ringing out for you a great tip is to make sure you're on the tips of your fingers you want to be right at 90 degree angle 
and you want to make sure that none of your fingers are hitting the string underneath and we're allowing a little bit of room as I say not touching the bottom of your guitar and it's E, A and D chords that make up level 2 of my beginners course the next chord we're going to go for is a G major chord and it's played like this Now there's a couple of variations of this G chord, I call this a big G, it can also be played like this, but I find it's best in the context that we're going to use it with the songs that you'll want to learn with these open chords that we go for the four fingered G chord, which is also called a big G, because it's easier to change to the D chord, which is a really common change, G to a D by keeping that third finger down. So we've got the G chord, which is the new one, and then the D chord, you can see that third finger is now the anchor. And in fact, we can go from all these four chords, four, three, two, one, and we never actually lifted off all of our fingers from the fretboard. We've always got one finger down, we've always got that contact on the fretboard, which I think is really important and really helps your changes. So for our G chord, we have your first finger at second fret of the fifth string, middle finger third fret of the sixth string, the thickest one, and then it's a bit more of a stretch for your third and little finger, which are both at the third fret of the thinnest two strings. The middle two strings are open, so we want to make sure that they ring out and that you haven't accidentally got a finger on them. Remember to stay on your tips. And this G chord makes up level three of my free beginners course, which also includes the D chord and the A chord. It works between those changes. So that's our first four chords, which are major chords. These are happy sounding chords, but can be summarized by saying just the G chord, for example. We don't have to say G major all the time. But the next two chords we're covering are minor chords. Now these are sad sounding chords, and if Music is an expression of emotion. We kind of need the happy and the sad, and it's the mix that makes things sound really good. And these chords are actually, if anything, a little bit easier than a couple of the other ones. The first one of which is probably the easiest. This is the E minor chord, which I encourage you to play with your first two fingers. So we have your first finger at the fifth fret of the second string, and then your middle finger directly underneath it, leaving the thickest E string, because again, this is the E chord. You can play it with other fingering, so your middle two fingers, but I prefer your first two fingers, then we've got an anchor finger between the G and that E minor. So again, we can go through all our chords and not have to take off all your fingers. The next one is the A minor, and this is the chord. Now this one's so easy because it's actually the same shape as the first chord that we learned, which was the E major. So this is our E major chord. But get this, if you move this down a string, it's suddenly a whole of a different chord and it sounds sad. And remember we want to strum from our open A string and not strum that thickest E note because this is an A chord, so we still strum from that open A string. There aren't too many songs that use just minor chords, but there are a few, and they make up level four of my beginners course. The final chord we're going to go for in this lesson is a C major chord. Now this was actually the first chord that my older brother taught me when I was around nine or ten, and it's a little bit more of a stretch, so it's not ideal for an absolute beginner, but it is really commonly used. And this is our C major chord. So we got two fingers where they were actually on the A minor chord. First finger, first fret of the second string. Middle finger on the fourth string, second fret. And third finger, bit of a stretch, third fret of the fifth string. So we have one, two, three. Give it a strum, pick each individual string, and strum again. 
Now a great thing to remember with this C chord in particular, which can be tr quite tricky for a lot of people, is to have your fingers on this angle. So if you're going for this chord and plenty of others, and have your fingers vertical along with the frets, so in line with the frets going down, you're going to find it a real struggle. It's going to be a real stretch for your hand which will feel very unnatural for you. Now if we put our hands on this angle, so everything, all your fingers are basically curled up and pointing towards yourself, um, you'll find it a much more comfortable grip for your hand and it can, in time, become second nature. That chord again, one, two, three, and this is our C chord which we would strum from string five all the way down. So if you were able to follow that video and play each one of those chords as we went through them, then you've done a really great job. I really can't understand that, that's really fantastic. Um, no matter if you found that an easy or a difficult exercise, um, the actual test for this and the way you want to practice it is exactly the same and it comes down to the changes between the chords as well as just learning each one of them in turn remembering the names of so forth but the real trick to nailing these chords is getting your fingers to remember where to go more instinctively having that muscle memory and being able to get the changes between the chords not just the chords themselves so every one of those chords as I say we can change through them by keeping one finger down as we go. There's the E chord. We keep our first finger down and change to the A. We keep our first finger down again and change to the D. We keep our third finger down this time and we change to the G. We keep the first finger down and change to E minor. We keep the middle finger down and change to A minor. And we keep the first two fingers down to change to the C chord. So we were able to get through all seven chords without having to lift off all your fingers at once. Now that is a way more, you know, advanced exercise than you want to be going for if you're still trying to remember all the basic chord names. But this video is something that you can always refer back to and try and see where you are with that exercise because it's really when you're able to do that that you can go for songs with all those chords in them. If you find that you can only manage say the E, A and the D and all the others you forget where to put your fingers or you forget what the chords called or the changes aren't quite there yet, everything's not quite ringing out, then you know to go for songs that just have E, A and D in it and then practice the chords themselves until you're ready, until your fingers have memorized those shapes and they're ringing out great. So at each stage when I went through those chords there, we have those levels of my beginner's course and you know where to go from this video basically. I hope that's something you've enjoyed and I really do wish you many years of guitar playing fun. Thanks for watching, please subscribe here if you like what I'm doing and I'm sure I'll see you again, bye for now.